Now, if there's one thing that really annoys me, it's all of those obnoxious widget panels that you get slapped on the WordPress dashboard by theme developers and plugin developers, not to mention WordPress itself. Now, it's annoying enough on your own site, but when you hand a site off to a client, well, imagine their first impression when they're presented with a boatload of information that means absolutely nothing to them. Yes, they could click on the screen options panel, but realistically, they shouldn't need to. Now, this is doubly annoying when you get this from paid for plugins and paid for themes. Add to that the annoying, ooh, please rate my plugin nag message, well, and the whole experience is far from ideal. Today, I'm going to show you how you can deal with a lot of these, including the default WordPress dross that no one, none of us care about. I mean, do we really want to know about WordPress news? So let's kick this off by taking a look at what I'm talking about, and then we'll take a look at how to deal with it. Welcome to a typical dashboard in WordPress. I simply have a theme installed, a couple of plugins, and that is it. And this is all the junk that I have to deal with when I log in. Now you may think this isn't an issue and you're quite happy to go up to the screen options and disable all these things and close all these little message boxes and things down. And that's perfectly fine if it's your site. However, there are a couple of things that I don't think is acceptable. First of all, if I'm paying for a plugin, whether it's for myself or for a client, I don't want to see nag screens like, do you like our plugin? Please rate it. No. If I think your plugin is good, I will go and rate it off my own back. I don't want and I don't need that kind of junk being evident inside a dashboard panel, especially when you log in, especially if you're having a paying client, they don't need to see this. They also don't need to have to go up to this section at the top to disable all of this junk that they probably don't want to see either. Now, there is one thing where I think it is acceptable to have information about your plugin, and that is if you are providing a free plugin and you may have commercial plugins that you want to make people aware of in the hope that they'll like your free plugin and pay for a pro version or pay for another plugin that they may find useful, by all means, put that information, but put it into the settings section of your plugin. Don't start splashing it all over the dashboard of WordPress. It's already a pretty rubbish looking welcome section whenever you log in there, it's pretty dated. It just doesn't need to be inundated with all of this junk. So. Like I say, that's my little rant, that's one of my frustrations. So how do we go about getting rid of some of this junk? I'm gonna show you two different methods in which you can use to do this. Now obviously you could use a plugin to do this and there are probably plenty of plugins out there. And if you enjoy doing it that way, you don't want to go to the hassle of working it through the way that I'm gonna show you, by all means do that. But it is another plugin you need to keep updated, you need to keep an eye on, and there could be issues moving on down the line. So with that said, what's the first method? Well, we can use the functions PHP file as we've seen in many, many different scenarios where we can then go in and we can enable and disable various different functions as part of WordPress and or plugins, things like WooCommerce and so on. So the functions PHP file is a good place to start. So we're gonna do that first of all, we're gonna take a look at one way of doing it. Then I'm gonna show you the way that I would personally prefer to do it. Now, if you're gonna follow me through with the functions PHP way of working, I'm gonna first of all show you the way that I don't recommend, then I'll show you the way that I do recommend. So if you want to do it the quick down and dirty way where you don't worry about making a mess of things and ultimately you could end up taking your site offline and you then have to fault find, you can come into the appearance section and come down to the theme editor option. You can then confirm through any of the warnings that you're going to get to say, you know, you could cause yourself a problem. What you need to do then is select the theme that you're using. Now, by default, this should be set up in here. And if you want to work this way, I would 100% highly recommend that you don't do it with a full version of your theme. You set up a child theme, and most modern themes will have a child theme available. I'm using Astra in this example. So you'd have the Astra child theme, and then you do the changes inside there. But just for brevity, I'm going to show you how you can edit this function's PHP file. When we look at the right hand side, you can see we've got this column and that shows all the files that are related to this particular theme. If you're using a child theme, you'll probably see a lot less inside there. What you're looking for though is the functions.php file. We can click on that and that will then open up the functions.php file and we can now make edits to that file. So let's scroll right the way to the bottom and I'm going to just show you one simple example to get rid of that elemental panel. 
So we're just going to make some space at the bottom and then we're going to just copy in a little bit of code and the link to this code will be in the description below. It's from a GitHub page and it's information about how you can just hide just the Elementor panel. So we'll do that to start off with and we'll expand upon this as we move forward. So this is the GitHub page and this is the little block of code that we're going to use. As you can see, because we're inside the functions PHP file and that's where this is going to go, pretty much all things you're going to do are generally going to start off with a function call. It's going to tell it this is a function and it's going to do something. Now we're not going to go into detail what this particular function does. I don't think you even need to worry about it. We're just using this to get rid of some stuff we don't want. So what we're going to do, we're going to copy that. And then we're going to come back into our functions PHP file and we're simply going to paste that in at the bottom, making sure you are right at the bottom so you don't inter interfere with any of the settings, anything else that may already be set up inside your functions PHP file. We'll hit update file and providing there's no errors and nothing comes up, this will tell us the file's been edited successfully. We can then come back to our dashboard, we'll open that up in a new tab and we'll find now that that large panel for Elementor has gone. If we come up to the screen options at the top, you'll also see it's gone from there. So that's the super simple down and dirty way of doing it. However, like I say, I would not Jerry recommend that you do this directly inside the dashboard of WordPress. So let's come back into this. Let's undo what we've just done. Let me just show you the way I would prefer to do this if you want to work inside the functions PHP file. So we'll update this now to put it back to what it was. Now, when you're working with most hosting companies, you're going to have some kind of file management that's part of the hosting account for your site. I'm using SiteGround in this example. So I'm inside my SiteGround account and I'm inside the file manager, as you can see on the left hand side. And then I've got all of the subdomains for any of the sites that I have listed inside this main area. I'm going to be using this astra.pro wppropwebsite.com for our example today. So we're going to just check on that. And you can see this will now show us any files or folders sitting inside the root directory of this. Now, if you are in the root directory, you'll see a public underscore HTML file. And depending upon how your hosting is set up, you may already be inside that public underscore HTML file. If you are, then don't worry about going into it because obviously you're already there. So what we're going to do is we're going to open that up and inside there, this is where all of the front facing files for your website reside. In other words, anything inside the public underscore HTML folder is what will be accessible on your domain. So as you can see, this is our WordPress install. So all the WordPress files and folders are located inside here. What we want to do is go into the WP content folder and inside there, we can see our plugins, themes and so on. We're going to open up our themes folder and this will show us any folders for any themes we currently have installed. Now, obviously, it's not going to tell us which one's active, but I know this is the Astra theme. And like I say, I would still recommend that you use a child theme whenever you're making changes to this. Like I say, I'm just not going to bother with this because I just want to show you for brevity how you can make these changes. So let's open up the Astra folder. And inside there, we've got, again, a series of folders and also a series of files. You can see there's our functions.php file. That's exactly the same file as we just edited inside the dashboard of WordPress, but we're going to edit it inside this file manager. You could alternatively use some FTP software if you wanted to, if you're more familiar, familiar with that, and it's going to work in exactly the same way. You're still going to navigate around, still going to find the same folder structure inside there. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this up to edit it. So we say edit, and then again, you can see there's all of the details that we had in that same functions PHP file. So what we're going to do, come down to the bottom of our page, and we're just going to paste in that same little block of code. I'm going to hit save, and now we come back to the dashboard. Once that's saved, we'll see that's updated, and we refresh this, and you can see we still have that Elementor panel is still now gone because we've set it up inside the same file, just using a different method. Now, before we move on, let me explain why I would recommend using this method or the FTP method over the alternative we saw at the beginning, which is directly inside the dashboard of WordPress. If you make a mistake inside the code, you can ultimately crash your site. So you could take it offline with an error. There could be a comma, a semicolon missing. Could be all manner of different things when you're copying data over. If you're not comfortable then in fault finding, then you're going to have to come in and use this method, either the file manager for your hosting account or something like an FTP client to come in, take out that code that you set up originally inside the dashboard of WordPress, remove all that, and then resave it. And you're going to then 
probably get your site back online. It's just a little bit of a pain having to go through that rigmarole if you make a mistake. Whereas if you use this method or FTP, because you have it open in a separate location, if you make a mistake and your site goes offline, you already have this open inside your file manager or FTP, so you can quickly undo what you just did or fault find to see what you missed out, correct it, and get everything back up and running super quickly. Just one of those things that I would recommend doing it one of these ways. It's just a little bit more flexible and a little bit safer. Okay, so that is how we can do it using the functions PHP file. Now let me show you my preferred method of doing this. I'm gonna undo the change we've just made to this, and we're gonna resave this to make sure that we have no changes made to that functions PHP file. And we're done with the functions PHP file, so we can close that down. We're gonna stay inside the Astra site though. We're gonna come out of the theme section and we're gonna go into the plugin section. And then all my plugins that I have currently installed are gonna be listed there. So you can see, we only have a couple of different plugins installed and already the dashboard is a bit of a nightmare. Now, you may be thinking, well, what exactly are you going to do inside the plugins folder to be able to make those changes? Well, we're gonna create our own simple plugin. Now you may be thinking, hang on a minute, that's a little bit overkill just to get rid of some of these panels, but bear with me. You may think it's overkill, but if I'm honest, I would rather do things like this in its own dedicated simple plugin because we can use exactly the same code as we use inside the functions PHP file, but we're not reliant upon that file. It's independent of whatever theme you want to use. So if you changed your theme, all those changes you made to your functions PHP file will all be lost because you'll be starting with a different functions PHP file. Creating your own simple plugin means it's completely independent of whatever theme you want to use or whatever plugins you may install. So with that being said, let's take a look at how easy it is to create your own simple plugin. I'm going to create a folder inside the plugins folder. So open that up and we're going to call this dash cleaner. And we're going to confirm that. So we're just creating a folder now for our plugin. We're going to open up the dash cleaner folder and inside there we're going to create a new PHP file. So we're going to just insert a new file and we're going to call this dash cleaner.php. Simple as that. And that's the only file we need to create. So now we need to tell it what to do, tell it what this plugin is, and then we're going to build the actual contents of the plugin out. So let's open this up. I'm going to edit that. Now whenever you create a plugin you need to put in some basic information at the top. And that basic information has to be wrapped inside PHP tags. So what we're going to do is we're going to just paste that in there and I'm going to make a bit of space and put the closing PHP tag in. Now let's take a little look at what this information is. This is just simply text information that tells it in the dashboard of WordPress nice ways of saying what the plugin is, any links that may be useful, the description of what the plugin does, who the author is and so on. It's all totally optional. It just means that when you come back in six months time and you look at your dashboard, you think, what the heck is Dash Cleaner? At least you can see that you wrote it, the date you wrote it, and you can say exactly what it is that it does. Simple as that. So that's all this is. And I would just suggest you just take a look at what I've done there. And I'll put the code on the website so you can see this for yourself. And if you want to copy this information over, you can do just that. Only thing we need to do now is make sure that any of the functions we place inside this particular file sit before the closing PHP tag. Otherwise, we will generate an error. Okay, so let's just start off now with that same little bit of code that we had to do with hiding the dashboard, the Elementor dashboard panel. We'll hop back over to that GitHub and we'll copy this again. I'm going to come back out of there, we'll go, back to our, ooh, go back to our site. And we're just going to paste that little bit of code inside there. Okay, so let's just check this now. Let's go back to our dashboard. Let's refresh this before we make any changes. We've got rid of everything inside the functions PHP file. And you can see our really annoying Elementor, Elementor overview panel is back in there. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to come back in. We're going to save this now because we've made some changes. We're going to hit save on there. And we have one simple function. And like I said, that is just to get rid of that Elementor dashboard. So come back into our dashboard for WordPress, we'll refresh it, and you can see it's still there. Reason being, we haven't actually activated our plugin yet. Let's go into our plugin section, go into installed plugins, and from there, you can see there's our dash cleaner, tells us what it is, which is all this information we just put into the top section of our PHP file, who it's by, the link through to our site, visit the plugin site, 
It just tells you where it is. So super simple, nothing complex in there. Let's activate this and providing everything is working okay. You can see it now tells us the plugin is activated. We've got no errors whatsoever. We come back to our dashboard. We should then find that elemental panel is gone. So that's how we can get rid of one panel. But what if we want to get rid of all these different panels inside you? Now it's worth bearing in mind at this point, it doesn't encompass these pop-up notifications. It's just to do with the panels or these widget panels that you can see. So we're going to close this down. We're going to say no thanks and please Elemental, stop putting that onto our site. And that goes the same for any other companies out there that stick these nag screens on our sites. It's really, really annoying. Okay. So we've got all these other things like quick drafts and WordPress, news and events, most things we don't really care about. Our client definitely doesn't care about. So let's come back into our site tools. Let's get rid of what we've just put in there. I'm going to clear that up. Now, I'm just going to copy in a big chunk of code, and I'm just going to explain what it's going to do once I've copied that in. So this is going to do pretty much the same kind of thing. It's just going to do it to a lot more panels. So let's just paste that inside there. Now, you may be looking at this and thinking, okay, that looks pretty complicated. But the reality is, it's just doing the same thing we just did, but it's doing it to more different dashboard widgets. You can see, remove meta box, dashboard primary, dashboard side, and then in comments at the end, the wordpress.com blog. Now, you may see some of these items you don't actually even see on your site. Is it going to hurt having them in there just in case you update something and a future update puts that panel in there? Absolutely not. It's going to make no difference. If it's not registered, not being used, it doesn't hurt. So you can see if we look through, we've got get rid of the plugins, the right now, the welcome panel, try Gutenberg panel, the quick press widget, recent drafts, other WordPress news, incoming links, recent comments, activity. And finally, I've also put in a simplified version of the dashboard for Elementor. So now what we should see if we save this version of our plugin, we come back into our dashboard, we refresh this page, and we should end up now with pretty much nothing other than the site health. If we take a look at the screen options at the top, that's all we've got is site health. So this is one of those things that once you've seen how to do this, you can look around on the internet. For example, if you're using WooCommerce, you may want to get rid of some of those. You can do a search and find out exactly what remove meta box information you need to use to get rid of that. Then you can update your plugin with that information as and when you need to. So it's nothing complicated. There's nothing really complex in this little plugin. And really it's just doing the same job as the functions PHP file, just in its own dedicated plugin. So it's up to you which way you want to work, whether you want to follow my plugin example, or whether you'd rather go into creating you know, the same kind of thing inside a functions PHP file, just making sure that you do that with a child theme installed and activated. So now that we have a clean and empty dashboard for WordPress, if you'd like to see how to do this same kind of thing with WooCommerce, let me know in the comment section below. And again, if enough people are interested in it, I'll show you how you can do that as well using pretty much the same methods. We'll take a look at it from a WooCommerce point of view. How do you normally deal with this type of thing? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you want to learn more about creating WordPress plugins, well, take a look at this video next. All of the applicable links for everything I cover today are in the description below. My name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tats. And until next time, take care.